Hi everyone, I'm going to talk about the Wave of Light monk again for Season 27. I've already highlighted this new Wave of Light bell power, you can see one of them right there on the bottom of the screen. So the way that works is that you put them on the ground and then you explode them multiple times with another skill. So effectively you get a lot more explosions than usual. And Wave of Light has already been one of the most powerful builds in the entire game ever since the inner rework in Season 24. And now that Inna has been nerfed, it will be the top dog for monks. In fact, right now it has by far the best solo push clear as well on the PTR. So it is looking really good for the monks despite the Inna nerf. And I decided to try out some speed farm with this because I haven't really been doing that very much. There was no reason to with the Inna. But it actually is extremely powerful as you can see here. So does the build in action. This is not even like fully optimized gear. This is an LOD build. I have two non-ancient pieces. I have pretty crappy affixes on my crudest boots and my bindings. So you saw them probably earlier there when I was highlighting the gear. In general, I think I can easily go up another two, three tiers just from better items alone. And I was blasting here. This is my first run, just trying out 120. And uh, yeah, like stuff is getting annihilated as you can see here. It's not really the tankiest build, but you can make it tankier if you want to. So there is an option to play Stone Gauntlets, there's an option to play Unity, and if you take both of these, then you're gonna be more than fine on the farming tiers. The thing is, you have to stack a lot of cooldown reduction, even more than usual on this build, because it only works when Epiphany is up. So this is the condition to get your Rabbit Strike clone to attack, and only your clone's attack matter, not your own. So you have to make sure that you always have Epiphany. So this is done with lots of cooldown and a Zodiac Ring. One problem is that the bells from the seasonal power don't actually proc the Zodiac Ring. So you only get Zodiac resets from mostly the Cyclone Strike, which you do have to press quite a bit to actually explode those bells. So you have to do like a combo of first bells, then Cyclone. It's not like, you know, inner type speed build where you just blast for the entire map in like 60 seconds, but you go very high tiers. There is not really all that much competition for the monk. There is the Firebird Wizard with the Magic Missile build. So that one is also looking extremely strong for speed farming in particular, and also as a uh, Rift Guardian killer. But it's quite likely that this build will lose a little bit of power, simply because those Magic Missiles are way too laggy, and I expect they're gonna tune down the number of missiles a little bit, which will hurt the Firebirds. So not because it's too OP, just yeah, so you can actually play it. So that's my expectation. And if there's no significant nerf to Wave of Light, then this is going to be like the undisputed king, both in solo pushing and probably farming. And as you can see here, most of these runs were still fairly fast. I was doing some two minute runs up to maybe three minutes. So the average was somewhere in like two and a half minutes or so on 120. And as I mentioned, we're still quite unoptimized gear. I think this build is actually strong enough to potentially become a four man speed meta as well. The main problem that this build has for four men is that it's kind of tough to support it. So it does have a lot of additive damage from the helm. So that reduces the value of a ZDH, for example. You can include a barb and then yeah, maybe a ZDH anyway, most likely. But yeah, it, it's not really getting as big of a boost as most other builds when you put it into a group scenario. But either way, with the power it has, the scaling is slightly reduced, but it probably won't be meta. This is looking very powerful and I believe yeah, the only two metas that would have a chance against this are uh, Firebirds, yes again, or Rats. So it looks like we're going to have kind of like a balance between those three setups and uh, maybe something else as well. We'll have to see for the PDR update, but right now it's looking like those are the top contenders. The main issue that this build really has is the quality of life is really low. So not only do you have to be really careful with your cooldowns, but the clone also tends to get stuck very easily, especially if you attack a lot. So for example, when you use Cyclone Strike with Epiphany to teleport forward through the rift, you can sometimes see on the minimap that the clone is getting stuck behind. And since the clone's attacks are all that matters, you have to sometimes wait or you know, just be careful with the amount of attacks you do so that the clone actually catches up to you. This is very annoying. I wish the build was simply around 
you know, your own attacks and not this weird clone mechanic that has never really been improved. Either way, it's looking pretty good for the Monk players next season around, despite the inner nerf, which can still be used very well for the 16, for bounties, and even for like really fast low GRs, like 100s, 105s or so, should be very comfortable in like 90 seconds or faster. So I'm not really too worried about the Monks. Personally, I'm looking forward to the PTR update to see what Blizzard has in store because there was a lot of feedback, not just from me, that, you know, for example, Witch Doctors are not really great, Tarasha is super weak right now. So there's definitely some potential for, you know, some big turnarounds on the meta, on some other classes suddenly becoming super crazy, and I'm quite excited to see that. So, hope you liked this video, subscribe for more D3 content, and I'll see you guys next time.